In this episode, unlimited energy, thankfully, a car you've definitely never heard of, the Ford GT Mark IV, and a really high fashion Maybach. Welcome to episode 149 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell, have you heard the news? Um, I've heard of a lot of news. I've heard of a car dealer price gouging an old used car. True. Um, but I don't know if I've heard of the news that you're talking about. There are two things that have happened recently. Um, one being an AI chatbot that is actually relatively good at helping people get more creative. Hmm. Uh, and another one being a breakthrough in nuclear fusion. Let's talk about that one. Why that do I one, feel like I'm not going to understand any of this? It's fine. I want you <laughs> to try to understand this. Okay, I'll do so, my best. At a basic level, there's fusion and fission, right? I've heard of the two. Yes. Fusing is when you combine two atoms. Mm -hmm. Fission is when you split atoms. Mm. We dropped fission bombs. The U.S. dropped fission bombs in World War II. Uh, the sun <clears throat> does fusion. Okay. It takes two hydrogen atoms and fuses them into helium atoms. Okay. Okay. So what the holy grail of energy in general, when I say energy, I mean it could be wind, it could be solar, it could be diesel, it could be coal, it could be gasoline, right? Any way of creating something that moves, getting energy out of something. The holy grail of energy is nuclear fusion. Okay. And getting what's called ignition in nuclear fusion. That meaning I put energy into a box, I fuse two things, and I want more energy to come out of that box than I put into that box. So the, the, the sum are greater than the parts, essentially. Right. Okay. And where you're getting that energy from is the fusing of the two elements. So the two okay. molecules, yeah. when they smash into each other, they weigh less than the adding of their parts. Uh -huh. And that weight turned into energy, E equals MC squared. Okay. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Mm -hmm. So what this means, there's a team in the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. This mm. is an actual team backed by government money. This is a full taxpayer thing, which is interesting. They have figured out a breakthrough in nuclear fusion. Mm. What they did was they took uh, a pellet, a tiny little pellet that had deuterium and tritium in it. The two elements, it doesn't really matter to you. That doesn't really matter to me either. But it's about the size of a peppercorn flake. Very small. Very, very small. Very, small mm -hmm. Right? And they shot 192 high-energy lasers at it. And you can see in the image that I'm showing you that mm -hmm. there are lasers coming in from the top and from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And they're what looks to be like a little sun in the middle. Yeah. That sun is that pellet of deuterium and tritium hmm. that got nuclear fused into each other and output more energy than they input with the lasers. Oh. This is the holy grail moment. Huh. This is what's called ignition in nuclear fusion. What this means is if they can scale this up, uh, the energy that they put in, by the way, was two megajoules in and they got three megajoules out. For reference, three megajoules is about one horsepower. It's not very much. You got a horse. But if you scale it, if you scale it well, to especially thousands of megajoules. Yeah, the fact that the the, uh, the size of what they put in was so small. Yep. Huh. So now the job is not to proof of concept this. They figured out that they can do it. Now it's for engineers to come in and make this practical, to turn that energy that was created into either electricity or movable mechanical energy, right? Something useful and valuable to us. Hmm. So the temperature that was created in there was 3 million degrees Celsius when they did this firing of the laser beam. It's about the same temperature that my wife likes to shower. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, they did get to conditions around the center of our sun. Holy shit. And that's how they got the elements to fuse. I got to admit, looking at the picture, it looks like like a torture chamber out of a movie. It kind of does. Like, <laughs> my brain just goes, they're like 
peeling and stringing some human flesh or something. This is an artist's representation of it with some real, I'm sure, ish yeah. photo stuff in there. Um, the amount of time it took them to do this, the shot of the laser, was like three billionths of a second. Huh. So just it was and done. Yep. Instantaneous. And it zapped and made one horsepower of output at energy. That's borderline going into the quantum field. It's starting to get, yeah, they're at the point where molecules in certain orientations start to matter. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the, the sphere that they were shooting at of the tritium in um, whatever the other, I can't remember, deuterium, mm-hmm. has to be perfectly round, as perfect as it can be, in a perfectly mirrored surface. So they're at the point where they're almost arranging atoms to make Sounds it as like it, yeah. efficient as possible. Um, the cool part here, though, Everyone kept on saying that the rumor mill is always nuclear fusion is 20 years away. That's been what people have said since the nuclear bombs went off. Well, since the nuclear bombs went off, it's been more than 20 years, but... It has been. This means we're about 10 years away. So it's not like tomorrow we're going to start utilizing this in our coal power plants. But in 10 years, if we unlock this, there's the potential for like two to three grams of that material would power your house for a year. That's how efficient this is. Uh, That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. I got to admit. You would never need to refuel your car. Hmm. Ever. Well, then how am I going to have those really awkward eye contact moments with the guy at the pump across the way? (laughs) Those are just gone? They would be. (laughs) Oh, no. I cherish that moment where I like look across and I catch eye contact and then it's an awkward contest of how awkward can I be versus them. You can still go to the store and park next to them. You can still go get your air in your tires and awkwardly stare at them because they're fumbling around with the air hose and can't figure out the right pressures and, you know. That, okay. Good there point. will be your moments. I was going to say, I still have to have my moment of like awkward competition where I will out awkward them. <laughs> there will be those but putting gasoline in your car this does seal the deal so there will be no need my question is is will they create energy that an internal combustion engine can use no they will create electricity okay. this puts the stamp the official stamp internal combustion will not it, it won't make any sense hmm Because what's going to happen is they're going to take this nuclear fusion, they're going to heat up water, and then they're going to turn it into steam. And turning that into steam will turn a little turbine, and that little turbine will create electricity. That's basically what all power plants do right now. Either it be coal or uh, geothermal or anything. It's just heating water into steam and turning a turbine, which turns a magnet, which creates electricity. That's all it is. So they're going to use this to create steam, to create do the same process. Hmm. Uh, it is one of those moments in humanity that we'll look back on 200 years from now and be like, that was like when the internet started. That was massive. That was the printing press. One small step for man. One large step for mankind. It's bigger than that. Oh. It's way bigger than that. This also opens up the door for space travel like we've never seen before. How? Because you have an unlimited source of energy. Is it truly unlimited? Yes. Hmm. You can find tritium and deuterium in seawater. I see that. I didn't know what those elements were. If those were man made or not, I, I don't know. They're super easy to find. Huh. You have almost an unlimited amount of energy at this point. Now, like I said, this is not scaled up to big industry yet, but holy moly, it will. But it's and been proven it does, that it can be done. Yes, the proof of concept is there, which is the massive part that no one had figured out yet. Um, have you ever seen what's called a tokamak reactor? It's like those... Derek, I'm going to be honest. I've never even heard that <laughs> word until this <laughs> actual moment. So there's nuclear fusion and nuclear fission, and there's two different ways to do this. There's the shoot lasers at things, mm-hmm. and then there's also the put a bunch of magnets around it and try and confine plasma in a circle. It's called a tokamak reactor. <laughs> And apparently this way has won. Um, and this way causes no carbon footprint, no radiation. It's pure, clean, unlimited energy. Oh. Yeah. The to- 
Tokom Tokomo? No, to- to- Tokomek's dead. Tokomek is Tokomek. now officially <laughs> dead. Goodbye, Tokomek. Yes. <laughs> it will be fascinating to watch how this unfolds. I don't think you'll get one in a car. I don't think it'll make sense to have one in a car. But the energy that is created by this will certainly go into cars. I wonder if it could be energy that could create some sort of e-fuel to keep the ice cars running. <laughs> Because you'll have to keep them running, the ones that are still around. Like, they're not going to sell new ones, sure, but... No. You'll, you'll still need oil and stuff to make, like, things like plastic and lubricants for other things. But as far as, like, powering something with an internal combustion engine, it seems like it's on the way out. Hmm. Yeah, that's just... That's my two cents. But Interesting. massive moment in humanity. And we saw it happen. Sounds like it. Yes. You and might you not understand, but that's okay. By the taxpayers. So this was us that did this. This is us. And you know that the government is getting their juicy hands. And you know the military is just like, yes. <laughs> mm, yes, the military, yeah. industri- military industrial complex is about to eat this up. They are. How yes. can we spend money to make money to spend more money to boost National our profit? Security. Oh, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> yes. Mm. so that was the big news that happened do you have any car news that we should chat about i do i do um we're gonna talk about a car that you've never heard of okay and i know how much you like cars you've never heard of i've heard of a lot of cars have you heard of a donker vort <laughs> that has to be german right uh it's uh, dutch is what it is oh okay all right mm-hmm. no i have never heard of Donkervort. <laughs> yes, a Donkervort. We have a Donkervort. Tell me about it. Okay, so this is the new Donkervort F22, like the F22 Raptor, the uh, Stealth, the fifth gen fighter. Mm-hmm. It's the coolest plane ever to exist. But I digress. Um, the Donkervort F22 is an odd thing. Whoa! Just look at it. What do you think? I'm getting Viper vibes. I'm surprised you're getting Viper vibes from the back. Kinda. You're just looking at the fender flares and the yeah. lights, right? Yep. Kinda. Really, the vibes you should be getting are the vibes from the old uh, Lotus Super 7, which is kind of like a Catrum. Yeah, I was going to say Catrum, Ariel Adam meets Viper rear end. Precisely. Yep. So, Donkervort is it's a, it's a Dutch car maker that evolved from building, you know, kind of modified versions of that uh, Lotus 7, that was built originally by Colin Chapman. Uh, and this act, Donkervort actually started in 1978. I did not know that. I did so not either. It's old, but I guess it's Dutch, so we wouldn't really have known much about it. True. Uh, and the F-22 is the first Donkervort that has been designed fully in-house in the Donkervort labs. Mm. Kind of cool already. Yeah. Right? Now, here's where it's going to get really cool. How much do you think it weighs? Um, it must be kind of light, right? It's a... So before, before, you know what? Before I ask that, let me tell you what engine it's got. Because that'll help you determine lightness, right? Okay. Because a, a V8 diesel is going to weigh more than a two liter flat four, right? Right. So uh, the Donkervort F22 has a pretty tweaked and modified version of Audi, of uh, the Audi RS3. That uh, that two and a half liter inline five, that turbo inline five. Okay. So it's got five cylinders in a row that are pretty heavily turbocharged. Five cylinders is always an odd engine to me, but that's besides the point. I do see carbon seats. I see carbon frames. Uh, it looks light. I'm going to guess two thousand eight hundred pounds. Okay. You can cut that almost in half. Whoa. It's that light. 1,654 pounds. I would have never guessed in the 1,000s. Stupid light. That is kind of dangerous light. <laughs> it's really dangerous light when you think about the amount of power it makes. Uh-oh. Almost 500 horsepower. That's a lot of power for that weight. <laughs> that's a lot of power. <laughs> Do you want the spiciest car that's ever existed? Welcome to your Donkervort F22. Whoa. So their RS3 engine that they've tweaked, it's 492 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque. Whoa. With only 1,650 pounds. I can tell you, it's likely too much for that car. 
Oh yeah, it's it's wildly too much for that car. But that's why I love it. Yeah. Because it's just bonkers. That's wild. How can you not love a car that weighs 1,600 pounds that makes 500 horsepower? Oh, my God. And it's just barely a two-seater. Correct. It is small. It is Correct. very small. Yeah. It does zero to 60 in less than two and a half seconds. Zero to 124 miles an hour in 70, seven and a half seconds. Whoa. So it'll That's do quick. 0 to 124 faster than most cars will do 0 to 60. That's quick. That's ridiculous. It does have a top speed of 180, but that's not really made for top speed, right? Uh, apparently, the stats say it'll pull 2.15G in the corners. Woo. So it will stick, apparently. Yeah. There's not a ton of arrow on it either. No. Uh, it's got arrow, but it doesn't seem like it's massive amounts of arrow. It, it's probably a lot of ground effect that we can't see. Yeah, I think so. Because there's no giant rear wing. There's not much fender flare or like side skirting going on. It's got to be undercarriage and yeah. Mm-hmm. Neat. Now, another cool figure here is its uh, weight to power ratio or power to weight, however you want to describe it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just under 3.4 pounds per horsepower. Whoa. That makes it better than a Bugatti Chiron Supersport <laughs> and about <laughs> level with a P1. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this this car is crazy. Also, have you seen how you get in? You open the hatch mm-hmm. to get in. And then you just close insert the hatch. yourself. It's kind of like a crossbow or I think it's a crossbow that has that like massive kind of hatch sort. opening that goes yeah. forward. Yeah. It's kind of like a crossbow meets an aerial atom. Yeah. It, I'd love it. That's crazy. It's so cool. Now, it is only rear-wheel drive, which is pure, which is good. As it now, should be. here's something that kind of made me go, hmm, how many gears do you think it has? Five? Yeah. Six? Only a five-speed. Okay. It I does not have a six-speed. Like three, but I was going to no. Not that little. Okay. But, like, when's the last time you saw a manual that didn't have six-speed transmission? It's rare. Usually, they'd be going for the economy of scale at that point. Six or seven speed transmission, right? right. That's usually the, what we see nowadays. The car doesn't go past 85 miles an hour anyway, or you'd, ne- you'd never want to. But this, you said zero to 124. Well, yeah, you kind of need a six. You want a six gear. So I have some quotes from Dennis Donkervoort, who actually took over the company. Recently. What a great name. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so... Quote here is, we have a five-speed because it's lighter and shorter than a six or seven-speed. Hmm. And now, another quote here, we get our straight-line speed from being ultra-lightweight and having a strong, torquey engine, so we don't need all those gears to give us performance. And here's my favorite part. It also means drivers make fewer gear changes per lap, allowing them to to enjoy more of what they're doing behind the wheel. I like that they put that thought into it. I can get behind that. If they have valid reasoning for it, I can get behind the five-speed. Yeah, I can too. I love that. But I just love the fact that they put into their calculus the amount of enjoyment the driver's going to have per lap, and they went, you know, let's make them have more fun. I found where your rear wheel went. It went into the diffuser. All of it. That's where the arrow came from. Looks like there's a lot. Lots of grip. Oh, yeah. Huh. But really cool. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you we're probably not going to see one. Rarity? 50 worldwide. Ooh, very rare. Y- yes. Whoa. But that was the initial production run. Oh. And people said, we want more Donkervort. <laughs> <laughs> So they bumped it up to 75 cars. So again, probably not going to see one. No. Apparently there has been a couple that have been allocated for the U.S. that have already been gobbled up. Hmm. Okay. You ready for the price? This is what I was worried about. It, you should be. Uh-oh. The U.S. equivalent of between two hundred and sixty to $320,000. Hmm. It's not cheap. No. So I'm going to pose you the question. You're in the market. You're a very wealthy businessman. 
You've built a software company, sold it for millions of dollars. Good job, Derek. Well done. And now you said, hmm, I want something to have fun with, right? I don't really want a Lamborghini. I just see them all the time. Ferraris, they've locked, they've, they've lost their luster, right? So what else is there? May I present you the Donker of Ord F-22? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, so here's my thinking. When I'm successful enough and have my, uh, and taken possession of my car collection, right? I would get one of these over a regular Ferrari if I already had my collection of cars. Mm -hmm. If it's my first supercar or track car, probably not. No. But if I've already got my collection of Porsches, and when I do, right, I'll have my career GT, some GT3 RSs, and then I think... You know, I'm I'm still really successful. Successful. My investments are paying off. I'm doing well. I want to get something for fun. Am I gonna get a Lambo or a Ferrari, or am I gonna get this Donker Vort? <laughs> Wait, the name doesn't carry as much weight, but I think I would actually opt for this over a Lambo or a Ferrari if I already had my collection. I do think the person who's buying this already has a Zonda and a couple other cars in the garage. Probably a few. Yes. I'd imagine. I don't think it's a first-time buyer. I don't think it should be either. Agreed. Uh, because to actually experience this, you would need to drive it. And hopefully they would drive it. It does look striking. If I saw this at a car show, I would stop and go, whoa, what is that? I actually like the look of it. I do too. I'm not opposed to it at all. Uh, it's different, but not different in a bad way. Yeah, it's not slingshot different. No. It's like there's actual performance that make it's like god, it's a modern interpretation of a Catron. Yes. And I I like that. It's a long extended front crossbow. Mhm. Mm yes. It's very cool. It's not bad. Uh is do you think that the price is correct? That's a good question. Was it 280? 260 to 320, depending on spec. 300. Yeah. Call it 280 to 300, right? Okay. You know, I think it's not horrible in terms of pricing. I actually think the pricing is right. Yeah, that's kind of what I keep going, oh, God, that's just too much. But then I go, well, if you actually think about it, actually kind of makes sense because it's fully in-house developed right it's built by hand yeah yeah you're making savvy of them. it's built by hand and it's full in-house we'll never know we'll never have any idea how reliable how well it will be but i don't that's think it's irrelevant that's, yeah you don't buy it for that you're not going to put more than five thousand to ten thousand miles on it likely ever yeah considering the cars that you'll have in your garage um it will be a cool car show car. I don't think it'll see a track day, to be honest. I'm the other way. Really? I think this is going to be bought exclusively by people that are going to take it to a track. I don't actually think this is going to be a cars and coffee car. I think this is going to be strictly people that want to have fun on a track. Because what was the whole point of a Catrum? Yeah. Or the Lotus 7. Right. Was simplify and make light and go have fun on a track you could be right i think it would depend on the other cars they have in the garage which is why i think because this isn't typically going to be your first supercar you buy it's going to be the supercar you buy because it's going to be amazing on track that's my thought process there you're not going to take your aventador svj on track no you're going to take the the weird thing that's kind of a catrum. I see your thought process there. Um, I know it is supposed to be a pure driving experience, but if you have a Zonda, a Koenigsegg, two Ferraris, three Porsches in the garage, do you want the pure driving experience or do you want the speed? I don't know. I honestly think that it could go either way. This could just be a, 
If you brought this to Cars and Coffee, nobody would know what it is. It would be the talking point of the whole show. Yeah. It would steal the show. You'd walk by and go, oh, that's a cool Lamborghini, nice Bugatti. Oh, sweet fry. What the hell is that thing? What is that? And then you'd hear its name and you'd go, huh? What is that? <laughs> Did you sneeze? <laughs> Kazuntite? Uh, a Donkervort. <laughs> yes, bless you. Right. <laughs> I I like it. I think the pricing is spot on. Do you think that they will make a successor to this? It sounds like this was successful. They sold more than they allocated initially. Do you think that we'll see another Donkervort? The F23. <laughs> I, I, well, going by its naming, I hope it's an F35. Yeah, I was about to say that too. Right. Um, you know, I'm a hopeful, but I doubt it. If they make another one, I hope that they make more than 70. If they make another one, I hope they make one for a hundred grand and make it 2,000 of them. Yeah, a couple thousand at least. Something. So right. that it's attainable for other people to go and enjoy. Yes. I don't think they will though. The first car you make is the good one to do the limited run in. Mm -hmm. The next car you make, you need to start to get into not mass production, but more production. Much more production. Yes. Yes. But yeah, mm. it's, it's a neat thing. And it's cool called car. a Donker Vort. Cool car with a ridiculous name. It's a wild name. <laughs> <laughs> but let's move on to another kind of a wild, ridiculous thing, shall we? Sure. So did you know there's going to be another Ford GT? No. Yes. So Ford GT has suffered the same kind of a fate of like all of the cars that have been told they're going to die and they go oh no we got another one mm. oh no oh this is the last one oh no we have another one. Oh, but wait 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 we have one more we really wanted to release and marketing every time says this is the last one well yes of course yeah <laughs> mm. oh, but of course not a fan not a fan of that but there is a new ford gt coming out and is the ford gt mark four so mkiv in roman numerals okay it is track only. Is this an EV? Nope. Really? Really, really. Oh. Now, again, final 4G. They're touting this as the end of the run. But is it? I think I've heard that before from the 4GT. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be the end. No. It With how bonkers this thing looks, it could be. But I don't know. Wow. This reminds me of the, was it the Porsche Senna. 918 that they kind of took to the Nürburgring and put a bunch of crazy aero on that was basically a car that ran in IMSA and now took all the lap time from everywhere. Kind of, sort of. It yeah. kind of reminds me of that. Kind of, I see I see, where you're, I see your point. Um, so think of it more as a long tail version. So this is a street car? Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, you no. said this is a track only. Track only. Uh, but imagine, like, you have the regular, I don't know, the regular 720S with McLaren. Mm -hmm. and then you have 765 long tail. Okay. Right? So the bodywork extended further, a little bit longer wheelbase. It's just a more purpose-built thing. More race car for your race car. Yes, correct. Now, this is very race car. Uh, it is very, 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 very race car. Uh, they are making this in honor of the Le Mans winning 1967 uh, Ford GT Mark IV that was piloted by Mr. Dan Gurney and AJ Foyt. I can see the Le Mans in it. Uh -huh. I can see it. And continuing with that Le Mans-ness, what year did I just uh, ask or say that they won? 19 what? What was it? 1967? 67? Yeah. So guess how many they're making. 67. Ah. Okay. Yep. All right. So there's meaning behind how many making. So it's limited to 67 with a little bit of a nod to 1967, right? Um, it's, like I said, it's got a longer wheelbase, longer body work to make it more down for C and such. Now, they did completely scrap the regular, I think it's a seven-speed double clutch transmission that goes in the standard Ford GT. Hmm. They got rid of it completely. Goodbye. Okay. They put a full proper racing gearbox, racing sequential gearbox in this thing. Wow. <laughs> okay. So it's like, it's an actual racing gearbox. 
Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, they did uh, crank up the displacement from the standard uh, three and a half liter V6 with a twin turbo. Uh, it is now going to be making uh, more than 800 horsepower. That's a lot. It is a lot. They didn't release a uh, weight figure, but the regular Ford GT makes 660 horsepower. So 800 horsepower, that's a big bump. That's a big bump. And there's no way the IMSA race car made near that. It Not even probably close. Four this to would 500. blitz the IMSA car. Right. For, like, for sure. Um, and now, what's really cool here is you have all of this wild arrow. Look at it. They've actually got different body panels completely. Yeah. It's starting to remind me of F1 cars from the back in the day where they had all the crazy arrow. Not this generation, but like two generations ago mm -hmm. where the wings had ridiculous front ends to them. Wings on wings on wings on right. wings. Uh, it's pretty wild. And now also another thing that they scrapped from the standard Ford GT was the suspension. Hmm. You ever heard of a company called Multimatic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got a full Multimatic race suspension setup in it. Golly. Yeah. Hot damn. This is a proper, this is a ridiculous race car. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. It is it is amazing. They actually, like, they, they got, they made it much lighter, as you can tell, right, with all this carbonness. One of the things they made lighter is they got rid of the headlights. I can you see, see that. It, you, they just have these, like, little LED strips. rings, strips, because yeah. you don't really need to see a whole lot. Hmm. Uh, it's insane. You know where I'd love to see this? Pike's Peak. That would be cool, for sure. I'd love to see it at Freedom Factory. I, I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, kidding. That wouldn't work. I'm kidding. No, any any track would be cool, but I could see this doing well at a hill climb as well. Yeah, it looks hill climby. Any F1 track, this would just grip and stick and go I'd love forever. to see this at Spa. Yeah, that would be a great track. Oh, Rouge right. and Radion in this thing? Whoa. Laguna Seca would be good. Yep. Just glued to the corkscrew. Sebring would not be good. No, you'd Daytona be, would be good. You'd be bounced to the stratosphere in that right. thing. Um, now, shall we speak about price? Uh, yeah. It's not cheap, just like the Donkavort, but it's much more not cheap than the Donkavort. Uh, it does have full race components. I know the IMSA race car, I mean, I don't think you can buy that, but my would guess would be around... 800k maybe a million more oh no 1.7 million dollars oh no oh yes and it gets better you are not allowed to buy it oh it's a track only car yeah that we said that manufacturer keeps we, we did say that yeah but that the manufacturer keeps mm, you kind of sort of you are allowed to keep it from my understanding but you must be approved to buy it oh you have to apply directly to Ford. I believe that's the same with most Ford GTs. No. You don't have to apply. You have to get an allocation. Right. But you don't have to send in a formal application. Think like college application. That's kind of weird. Hmm. I guess if you're going to buy it, you've got to be real special. Hmm. And I guess you also have to be qualified to be able to drive it. Really? Well, I, I, that's my guess. Because if you have to be approved to buy it yeah then to me that would mean that if you don't know how to drive it they won't let you buy it <laughs> so you have to have what like an faa license to i don't know huh. there's no st there's no details on that but that's my guess that you can't just hopefully buy it and then go oh yeah i'm gonna go drive it at my nearest track and then wrap it around a pole wow hmm 1.7 mil. What was, uh, do you know off the top of your head how much like the Ferrari FXX was? Because it's very similar to that, right? You know, I'll actually tell you. Hold on just a second. Because that was one of those cars that you would buy from Ferrari. You couldn't actually keep in your garage. You would then tell, you would call them and say, hello, Italy. I would love to be at Laguna Seca on the third Sunday of this month. And they would say, sure, we'll send your car there. We'll meet you there. And it will be all prepped and ready to go. How much was that? The Ferrari FXXK was the track-only version of the La Ferrari. Mm -hmm. It was two point six million. Whoa! It's a okay. bargain. This Ford GT. This is a bargain. It's a bargain. 
It's just cheap. It's the dollar store version. Wow. It's half off. Black Friday sale. How many of them were there? 67 That's after right. the 1967 win. They'll sell. Oh, they're probably they'll already sell. sold. Are you kidding me? They're probably already they, yeah, They're yeah. gone at this point. Yep. Mm. Neat. We'll never see it. Uh, we, mm. There's no way. Uh, hold. Wait. A minute. Do you happen to remember a race series that we've been to that races historic cars? The HSR? Mm-hmm. Historic. Do yeah. you happen to remember who is one of the top drivers in that uh, race series? No. Literally the CEO of Ford. Ah, what's his name? Jim Farley. Jim Farley, that's right. We might actually see one in and around an HSR event. Either it will be that, it will be the Rolex 24, or the Sebring 12 Hours. That's where we'll see one of these. But only those events. Or Road America. Right. It's just like sports that. car. Very historic or very important sports car events. Y- yes, but particularly where Ford has a hand. Right. And I would think that if Ford CEO is racing HSR, there's a chance. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying. There's Ford's not doing the LMDH thing, are they? No. Wow. That's what I'm saying. So I don't know. I don't know about the whole IMSA. They're done running Ford GTs in IMSA. Yeah, it's been done for a while. Right. Because they were in... The next Ford race car is the Mustang GT3. That's right. Hmm. I wonder if... No. Because you wouldn't take that car and try to, like do tech stuff for an lmdh that nope wow it's too far gone for that this is just the send-off mm-hmm. of the ford gt race car in theory yeah <laughs> till next year <laughs> yeah give it a few months huh <laughs> all right neat mm-hmm. wow i just realized all the news that i'm going to talk about is all limited cars okay because i have another limited car to talk about what's next it's german and it is a mercedes maybach Hmm. And it's not a car that either of us are interested in. Okay. Think of it more to uh, as a competitor to the Buick Century minivan that we talked about. You mean the car of the year? <laughs> Decade for you. Yeah. Car of the century. Best vehicle ever made. Yeah. So this would be more of an, a, a competitor to that. Okay. But for much more monies. Uh, so this is the new Mercedes Maybach S680 Haute voiture, I think is how you say that. Okay. I am not en français, but this is my guess. All right. Uh, it's a special edition of the S680, which is essentially a V12 S class that's stretched a bit further. Hmm. It's really funny. It's actually on my way over this evening, I saw one, not the Haute voiture, but an actual Maybach S680 on the way. Right. I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. You can see a couple of those around here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, But apparently it's the special edition. You know what it's been inspired by? No. High fashion. Oh, boy. So it's been inspired by Lewis Hamilton. That's my guess. (laughs) With his, like, man dress thing that he wore. You know what he wore to the, what is it, the Met Gala or whatever it is? I know what you're talking about. High fashion is so goddamn ugly. It's not our thing. I mean, every time I look at something that comes on TV, and I'm like, oh, that's high fashion. I just think, what? Who would wear this? Give me a t shirt, pair of jeans, I'm good. Yes, but that's... people look at you in a Porsche 911 GT3 RS and go, why would you ever spend that kind of money on that kind of car when all I need is a Toyota Corolla to get me from point A to point B? It's the same concept. I hate that you just put it in that perspective. It's the same I exact concept. I hate you so concept. much for that. They're just into fashion and you're not. Yes, but fashion doesn't make you go quickly. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but it makes you look appealing from the social media oh. perspective, I guess. I suppose. Yes. Well, apparently, like, getting back to this Mercedes Maybach S680 Haute Voiture, it does come with this uh, exclusive two-tone paint job. Uh, it's got a 
metallic nautical blue on the top of the car, uh, and then you have a rose gold bottom. Hmm. Interesting. Very. Also, the wheels are color matched to the top of the car. That's cool. That's neat. I do like. I do like it when they do stuff like that. That's right? cool. The body colored wheels. Um, apparently, not only can you buy this fancy high fashion Mercedes Maybach, you can also buy a bag collection that'll be coming with if you want. Oh, uh, it's going to have some of the same materials used in the interior. Oh, of course. Because why not? Apparently, the bag will also be sold in limited numbers. Great. <laughs> Okay. Limited numbers that match exactly the number of cars they make. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Uh, so, the interior. And I'm going to steal this quote. It is uniquely appointed interior with boucle fabric and other intricate details. You ever it heard of looks, boucle? I, no, I never have. This no. is like that magnet nuclear thing that Tecumo, <laughs> Tokamek, Tokomek? The Tokamek reactor. That one, yeah. This is yes. my version of that. I've never heard of this before. No. So I had to get a definition here. So boucle is a type of fabric that's woven from yarn. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, apparently the pattern uses some sort of a mix of like blue, beige, and rose gold and like other golds. It's that stuff you see in the doors. Yeah. It's... All right. Hmm. Uh, the interior looks amazing. I it was going to say. Super cool. It looks very comfortable, but it's a bit too wild for us. I love the interior. Yeah. It's not too wild for me. I love it. Really? I would have that interior in a Porsche. I don't. Uh-huh. I would ditch the yarn. I like the yarn a lot. Really? Yeah. It reminds me of the Papita or to the untrained eye, houndstooth seat inserts that you got from like the classic 911s. Okay. I do like that a lot. But okay. that looks comfortable. Oh. Yeah, you're just sitting on clouds. Jeez. Yeah. It looks amazing. But that that's what they have for this car. The performance is kind of irrelevant in this We're, car. I, I, there's not a real performance for you, but we're going to get into that in a second. Okay. Uh, before we do, the floor mats that this car comes with, they are made of... Is that uh, the bag? Yeah. Oh, wow. I kind of want to snuggle it. <laughs> it's almost a dog. <laughs> it looks like a dog. I want to snuggle that bag. It looks like a dog. So the floor mats are made of linen and mohair, which is the texture, apparently, which is yarn made from goat hair. Okay. So you're stepping on goats in the car. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds comfy. You also get a set of rose gold champagne flutes in the back. Oh, fantastic. For your business meetings. I would do my business meetings in the back of this. I would too. Be I would do many meetings in the back of that. Yes. I don't hate it. I don't hate it either. The uh, fashion uh, bit's a bit odd, but that's kind of what that culture is about. So Yeah, it, it is what it is. It's only it's limited to only 150 of them. Ooh. Um, now, real quick, this is the this is a, a fashion version of the Maybach S680, not the Maybach S580. Okay. The difference here is this S680 has a 621 horsepower twin turbo V12. So it's got power. Apparently, the the peasant Maybach that only has 496 horsepower. The Maybach S580, right? That went zero to sixty in four point one seconds. What? This is that's the peasant version. Oh my goodness! So the V12 with six hundred and twenty-one horsepower will be easily sub four seconds zero to sixty. There will be wine on the roof. Yes, at that speed, that's a problem. Your champagne flute will go out the back window. Goodbye. Yes, that is ridiculous. I thought performance wasn't the play here, but I guess it is. That's wild. <laughs> that means it's got to be... Does it have a weight? No. It's got to be not as heavy as I thought. It's going to be like 6,000 pounds, yeah. It's going to be like then, five to 6,000 pounds. You think that'll still get four seconds, zero to 60s? Yeah, you know, remember last week when we talked about the newest Mercedes S63 AMG E performance? Mm-hmm. It, same thing. It, that thing weighed like 6,000 pounds, and it was zero to 60 in... 
I don't know, like two and a half seconds or something stupid. Wow. This, I don't see why this can't be 0 to 60 in 3.8 or 7. That's spicy. Spicy fast. You wouldn't be able to reach the screen. No. You get on it and you're in the backseat going, I can't change the channel. My cloud is moving too fast. Yes. Yikes. Wow. So there's no official price. Okay. But you can expe- expect a sizable jump from the standard S680's price. The standard S680's price is $230,000. Uh oh. I would imagine this to be a $350,000 car. I Uh-oh. bet they put a $120,000 markup on this. There's no way there's $120,000 worth of markup. Not from my eye, but. You're stepping on goats. I know. I don't think the price is what matters. You're correct, but if you think about high fashion, the smallest piece of denim jean that only covers your butthole, that is the highest fashion, is like three grand or something stupid. Right, right. The more rare it is, the more valuable it is in that world. There's only 150 of these that will be made. R- very rare, right? Lewis Hamilton would love to sit in the back seat of this on his way to another loss. <laughs> all season. But <laughs> I like what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that would be exactly what happens. Do you think the price is about right at 350? Yeah. They'll like sell the price. shit out of this thing. Yeah. I think they could have made 500 of them. They would have sold them. They'll sell the living shit out of this thing. Yep. And it's ridiculous. You just can't mass produce this because of the craftsmanship in the interior. With your boucle interior. (laughs) God, I am so not fashionable enough for this. Neither am I. I can can appreciate it. I get it. I would never want it. Hold just a moment. What is the backdrop for the setting for the pictures we're looking at? They're in the desert. Where do you think the most of these cars are going to be bought? Dubai, <laughs> Qatar. So like. They know exactly where their ideal client lives. Yeah. They, their ideal client, they're going to sell 147 of them of the 150 in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Qatar. Arabia, Qatar, yep. Kuwait. They're literally telling you who's buying the car at the pictures. If you trade me oil money, I will give you this. And that's how it will work. <laughs> That's just the business model. Oh, it is, but y- yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, that's the new Mercedes Maybach S680 Haute Voiture. Okay. I think. I think that's how you say it. You're probably spot on. I, I did take French in high school. Really? I did. We, oui, monsieur. Man, I barely passed Spanish. Barely. How did you barely pass Spanish? We live in Florida. I hated it. I hated every bit of another language. <laughs> and I still can't spell English. You know, <laughs> your spelling is atrocious, it's bad. Derek. Jesus Christ. So do you have any other news for us? Any I do not. Nuclear reactors going and doing things and reacting and such? No. no. All right. So that's going to wrap us up for episode 149. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you are watching on YouTube, please uh, drop a comment and a thumbs up on the video. Let us know uh, if you think this Ford GT Mark IV is actually the last one or not. I I don't know. Or let us know. What do you think about the Donker board? Or even the nuclear uh, fusion, all that good stuff. If you're listening on audio only, so Apple and Spotify and that, please do leave us a five-star rating and a review if you like the show. Don't forget, though, to follow us on social. Facebook is We Are Auto. YouTube is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. And our website is We Are Auto dot I-O. We can go and check and catch some of your favorite past races. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.